A challenge for electrical engineers is that there are not very many good building information modeling programs for us. Everything seems to be focused on 3D modeling, where you've got really good looking 3D models of your panels, you can lay out your conduits and your table trays in 3D, but none of that really matters to an electrical engineer. The contractor is gonna care about that, but the electrical engineer, they're not installing it. If they do all of that modeling in 3D, half the time the contractor is gonna ignore it because he's gonna build it how he's gonna build it. So for the cases where you need to do collision detection, obviously that 3D modeling is important, but for the vast majority of your electrical design, the layout of those conduits and that cable tray isn't really what you're concerned about as the electrical engineer. None of the BIM software is addressing the problems we actually have, which are related to single line diagrams and calculations, all the stuff that actually has no relationship to the 3D model, but has everything to do with the electrical calculations that we're doing. That said, you're going to be asked to participate in BIM when you're doing your design of your electrical systems. I wanna help you evaluate the tools that you're looking at to see whether there's something that you can use or not to help your design process. Recently, I was reading an article that was a review of a product update for a BIM package. And so I was reading the introduction and it said that it's a leading tool for architectural engineering and infrastructure. And I thought, oh, engineering, that's related to electrical engineering. This might be something that's interesting. Let's see what they have in it. So I, I scroll down to the engineering section and it says that AEC firms can move seamlessly from design and construction modeling to planning. All right, that's a little bit vague, but it might have something related to what we're doing. I scrolled down in the article and started reading the section related to engineering. And it's talking about structural engineering. And it's talking about precast concrete. And I scroll down and there's more talking about precast. And it talks about cast in place concrete and clash detection for your beams. And then it moves on from there to construction planning. So the whole engineering section was related to structural engineering. Structural engineering is important. Structural engineers need BIM software as well. There was no acknowledgement that electrical engineering even existed and needed to participate in the BIM process. The article really highlighted the fact that electrical engineering gets ignored a lot when talking about BIM software. The industry is going to continue to push BIM on you and you need some sort of framework to evaluate the software that they put in front of you. I've got a series of 10 questions called the Electrical Engineering BIM Scorecard that you can ask of your software to see if it's something that's going to be usable and helpful for you in your electrical design. You can score the software on a scale from 0 to 10 to see how effective it is or isn't going to be for electrical design. The first question to ask is, does engineering exist? And this is a, is a half point to a point range. Um, it might mention AEC and not actually call out engineering. So if it says AEC, that's like half a point. Uh, if it actually mentions engineering, if it spells that out, you can give it a point. Uh, this is not useful software yet, but at least it's acknowledging that engineering as a discipline exists in the BIM world. The next question is, does MEP exist? Because as we saw, engineering is a lot of different disciplines. You've got structural, and that comes up a lot because there's a lot of clash detection involved with the structure of the building. MEP is not as involved, and so a lot of times they say engineering, and then MEP doesn't show up anywhere. So you want to ask, does the software talk about MEP engineering? And then from there, you want to drill down one step farther. Do they actually talk about electrical engineering? Is it generic MEP or are they talking about electrical engineering specifically? Then question number four is, can you insert electrical devices? If you hit number four, you can at least replace AutoCAD with this tool at this point. The idea is that if you can insert electrical devices, you can lay out a floor plan, you can do your 2D layout of your electrical design in this tool. So at least has some use for electrical design. You need to hit level four for something to be at least like baseline usable. So this is just the first step to having something that's usable for electrical design. The next question is, can you create a panel schedule? Here, you're going from just the 2D layout, the floor plans, to actually circuiting devices and then doing some sort of electrical design with them. If you can actually connect pieces together and then generate that panel schedule listing the devices that are on a circuit, this is where you start to replace Excel a little bit. And you actually have a piece of software that's gonna be a little bit more useful than what you had just in AutoCAD where you were drafting. You're getting into some of your design processes here if you can do a panel schedule in the software. The next two I've put together, it's whether you can do a voltage drop calculation and whether you can do panel load calculations. So this would be a score of a six or a seven. Uh, six if it can do one of them, uh, seven if it can do both. I put them together because some packages can do one or the other. So uh, you kind of get to a six if you can hit one, if you can hit both, then that's gonna be a level seven 
on this scale. Voltage drop is kind of the first obvious calculation to do. You have your devices laid out. You hopefully have some wire sizes. You can start to pull those lengths from the model. So you can actually do a voltage drop calculation in a BIM package a little bit easier than you can by hand. So voltage drop is one place where it's really easy for BIM to add value to your electrical design. And then on the panel load calculations, that's where we're looking at the feeder and service load calculations, where you're not just putting your loads on your panels, but then you're actually doing the demand factors to figure out what the load on that panel is going to be. From there, the next thing to look for is fault analysis. Can you do a short circuit calculation? It's actually not that hard to go from voltage drop to fault analysis. It's using the same basic model. You've got your wire lengths and you've got your wire sizes. Fault involves motor contributions, so that gets a little bit tricky, but it's just a little bit of additional math and you should have those motors laid out. So it should be relatively straightforward for a BIM package to go from being able to do voltage drop calculations to fault analysis. Turns out it's actually fairly difficult for the software developers to do this. So to get to a level eight, not a whole lot of programs actually hit this. But that's where you start to get into some interesting electrical design where you're not just doing the most basic calculations. This is where you're layering on additional calculations to make the BIM package be more useful for more purposes in your electrical design. And after fault analysis, the next thing you wanna look for is whether you can do a single line diagram because you have your 2D layout. So you've got all your devices on your plan. You've got your calculations happening at this point with your panel schedules, with your voltage drop, your short circuit. Now you wanna know is the single line diagram actually an integrated part of this model? Because that's like really where a lot of your design is happening. That's where you're laying out your panels, you're making your connections. This is what you do before you even have a 3D model of the building. And the single line diagram is a huge component of what you're doing. You need to keep this coordinated. So you wanna have a BIM package that has a single line diagram directly integrated with everything else that you're doing. It's an obvious feature that electrical engineers are gonna ask for that's missing from most BIM packages. Level 10, I'm going to call multifamily dwelling calculations, but it's really a whole host of higher level calculations. I'm using multifamily dwellings because that's just an example of the type of calculations you're looking for to have a true level 10 BIM software for electrical design. This is where you're taking those feeder and service load calculations and you're actually going into the deep nitty gritty pieces of the NEC. Things like multifamily dwelling calculations, those optional parts of NEC 220. You might not care about multifamily dwelling calculations, but if you have a BIM package that includes them, that indicates a depth of calculation to the software that's gonna handle most of what you're gonna need for your design purposes. So once you get to the point where you're including multifamily dwellings as a calculation, you've just got so much depth and richness to the design model at that point that whatever projects you're working on, you're going to have most of your design features included in it. That's the list of questions you want to ask when you're evaluating BIM software for electrical engineering. Does engineering exist? Does MEP exist? Does electrical exist? And can you insert electrical devices? That's level four. If you get there, you've got something that's at least usable. Can you do a panel schedule? Does it have voltage drop or panel load calculations? That's where it's starting to actually add some value to your electrical design process. Can you do a fault analysis? Are there single line diagrams? Does it include multifamily dwelling calculations? That's where you're actually getting into real depth of electrical engineering and you're gonna have a piece of software that's really enhancing the design process. Ask those questions and that's gonna give you a score of one to 10. The higher, the better. You need a minimum of at least four for it to be something that you could use or consider. If it's not a four, it's not something that you can use in your workflow. When you're presented with a new BIM program, you can use this list of questions to evaluate whether it's gonna be useful for your electrical design or not. I'm gonna be using this list of questions to evaluate the BIM tools that currently exist for electrical design to see where they rank. If you wanna see those evaluations, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you're alerted when the videos are posted.